Hey y'all, Shay Shay here. Today I'm gonna to be your host for this week's Whip and Chat. So go ahead and settle in, craft alongside me. Um, I normally go for about an hour, so we'll see how long it goes. Um, I'm gonna be diamond painting. So you're welcome to watch as I diamond paint, or you can listen and treat this like as a podcast. Um, Whip stands for uh, work in progress. So uh, yeah, run errands, work, whatever you've gotta do. Um, just let, let us kind of hang out for a little bit and let me entertain you, okay? And let's just keep each other company. Um, so my diamond painting is from Diamond Art Club. And let me grab a little sticker to show you. Actually, I'll give you the big one. I love Diamond Art Club because they give you two different options. This is great to put on the side of your box, and then this is great to put in a logbook. But this is Starry Night Santa, and it's from Donna Gelsinger. And it is a square and it's a 42 by 57 in centimeters. And I will pop up a picture probably in this corner. We'll kind of decide when I edit the video. Um, and you can see I'm on, I'm on the second row from the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. And I'm using a Muni Made tray. So a blue tray from Muni Made, it is 3D printed. And then I have some pens and I have a little um, tray here. This is from Lexi Sparkle Craft and it's a little trinket tray, it's resin. So it just holds all my little accessories right next to me. This pen is from Diamond Pen Pal and it, it does have the, the no roll. So one of the, you know, it's got flat edge on one side and I love it. Um, I am using micro glue dots in my single placer and then I just have a white, um, let's see, this is a seven placer and I am using um, Butterfly Effect Wears diamond, um, Diamonds. This is this dot dot putty. It smells really good, really good. And I'll have all these um, shops listed down below, everything that I'm using today. So if you're interested in any of these shops, I'll have them linked down below in the description. And then this is from Enablers Outpost. I got this last year. It's got the red and the green, and I am using uh, a placer from Diamond Art Club. This is a six placer, a metal placer. And then the just the brass tip and the, I don't really care for the um, metal tips in my single placers. I've just always, love the brass tips and that's kind of what I've always used. And then of course tweezers in case we need to pick anything off. And then I've got my ceramic cutter. So you'll see that I've got my diamond painting sectioned off, sectioned off with washi tape from Simply Gilded. And what I'll do is whenever I finish this square right here, which I'm about halfway through, I've got a little bit in through here, some patches, I'll go ahead and just kind of slice this off with the cutter. It's got a tiny, tiny little blade. See, it's just microscopic. Um, it never cuts through the canvas. It's I push down really hard too. Um, cut that off and then you can move on to the next section. And uh, because this is the last one, I'll just peel this up. And I am using a cover minder. It's my little ugly Christmas sweater. I don't remember where I got this from. I think it was a freebie with a pen that I had ordered a long time ago. And uh, it's got the magnet underneath, underneath my painting. So just kind of, I gotta find the magnet underneath. Where'd you go? It likes to move on me. Oh, there we go. Okay. And that'll hold back my plastic. And then I am using for storage for all my drills, I'm using Elizabeth Ward. And there are 38 colors. Yes, and we've got one, two, there's two ABs. So Aurora Borealis, there's an orange and a white. And I'm not enhancing it any further. So this is just how it came. So yes, lots of blues, um, which have gotten a little tiresome at times, to be honest. Um, but I'm just kind of working through it. And now I'm on the, the reindeer's legs, which is really nice and Santa right here. So I've kind of gotten, cause all it was was blue and white. Um, this is, you know, until this point. So um, yeah, so grab something to drink something to eat. This is a little bit of a different day and time than I'm used to filming. Um, let's see, it's Saturday night. Saturday night at eight o'clock in the night, eight o'clock in the PM for me. And I'm not sure when this is gonna go out. Maybe Saturday night, if I can get it out in time or maybe Sunday morning for y'all, depending on when you're watching it. Um, so yeah, I got a job. I got a job and because I got a full-time job, um, I used to film these on Wednesdays after the kids would go to school and I'd put them up Thursday mornings for you guys. But with now my job, I might have to find like a new um, schedule. So we'll see. But I also feel like maybe it was just the first week, just kind of being tired and trying to get into the groove. Um, I'm hoping I can still do them Wednesday nights and get them up for you Thursday mornings. But I, we may have to um, look at that schedule. So we'll see. We will see. All right. Anything else? I think that's all I'm using. And I do have my little Christmas tree sitting next to me that I showed you guys last week. 
Let's see, let's do, I like the green. It just kind of lights up the green tree. Kind of just makes sense to me. So yeah, this was from a budget-friendly company. I don't remember where it came from, but it's just a little, little tree that you diamond paint and it lights up. So I've got that sitting next to me. And because it is Saturday night, I do have my wine, but of course. So yeah, let's just hang out. Um, I haven't even asked you guys, how are you? Please, please, please let me know down below how you guys are. Um, Cause I'm gonna spend a lot of this time just kind of catching you up on what I've been up to. But I read all of your comments. I love hearing, you know, what you guys have been up to and what your week has looked like. So please update me and let me know how you are. And I'm just gonna start diamond painting. I have not diamond painted in like, I think it's been two days now. So whew, what a whirlwind of a week it's been. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I know when we talked last, um, you know, last Wednesday slash Thursday, I was probably, you know, I wasn't working yet. So uh, for those of you that are new, hello, welcome. Thanks for joining me and for clicking on the thumbnail and welcome to my channel. And for those of you that have come back, thank you, of course. I really do appreciate you guys. Um, but yes, I, um, I was a stay-at-home mom uh, for 11 years, and uh, I just got a, a new job. Uh, started Monday this last week on the, uh, December 4th. So uh, let me just tell you guys a little bit if, I, if you didn't catch up on the last Whip and Chat on what I'm going to be doing uh, or what I am doing now. Um, so I work for a podiatrist. And um, I get to wear scrubs, which is so funny because those of you that have been around for a while, it, someone had mentioned, which I think was a great comment, um, I like almost manifested scrub wearing. Um, I don't know why. I've never worked in the medical field. I do have more of a corporate America background, you know, in marketing and administrative assistant positions and things like that. Um, and I've never been in the medical field and I don't have any experience necessarily. So, uh, and being I hadn't worked in 11 years, I started looking for a job recently because it's time. You know, my daughter and, you know, I've got three kids. My, my youngest is 11 and uh, she'll be in middle school next year and we're close to home. So she can walk home from school and, you know, she's just old enough now and it was just time. And with inflation and everything, everything has gotten so expensive. We really needed two incomes, you know, to, to make it work. So, uh, and plus, you know, I was getting a little... <sighs> I say I was getting bored, but now I really do appreciate <laughs> the, the, the life I had before. <laughs> Working is hard. It is hard, you guys. I, I was thinking, God, I was like, damn, I had it made. I had it made before. But at the same time, I was getting bored at home. I was, and I can't, I can't forget that. And that's why I started looking for a job too. It was time. I was just kind of, you know, farting around at home a lot. And that's just not that's not good for you, for your mental health and for your physical health and everything else. So um, I started looking online for a job and I was on looking, I was looking on Indeed, Indeed.com, which is a great website. They have a ton of jobs on there. And um, <clears throat> I was looking for just, you know, being I haven't worked in so long, I was just kind of looking for a, <clears throat> excuse me, a um, kind of a starting position somewhere to kind of like work my way up again. Because I figured, you know, it's been so long that I might not be relatable or hireable or whatever you want to call it, employable. So I just wasn't sure. So there was a position I applied for a lot of jobs, a lot. Um, and the crazy thing is, this is actually the only one that um, ended up working out, which was crazy. But I swear things are meant to be for a reason. And I really, really do believe that. Things happen for a reason. So I went in applying for a medical uh, front office receptionist position at a podiatrist's office and went in. Um, so let's see, my interview was Wednesday, week before last. And I went in um, while they were while we were talking and she was asking me about my, my experience, my job experience. I kind of told her, you know, about my marketing positions I had had at Nokia and Samsung for, you know, cell phone companies. And she's like, you know what? You have, you have quite a bit of marketing experience. She goes, I don't know if you know, but we actually have a marketing position that's actually opened as well. Is that something you might be interested in? And you guys, I had no idea. That never came up on my radar and the jobs on Indeed. Um, after the interview though, I did 
as soon as I got home, I looked it up because I'm like, are they serious? And I wanted to find out what the, you know, job description looked like and what I got myself into because I told her, yes, I was interested. And uh, sure enough, they had a position for a field marketing specialist is the official title. And so um, I told her yes. So came home and about an hour or two later, I got the job offer uh, and, and a letter and an email. And they said, when can you start? And I was like, uh, Monday. So that gave me a few days to kind of, you know, figure myself, figure out what I was going to do. Um, and at this point I didn't know what the attire was. I assumed a marketing position out in the field and visiting doctor's offices that I was going to be having to dress up. So I thought I would just send her an email like a couple days before I, I'm starting. And I was like, so what's the attire? And she's like black scrubs, if you can get them by Monday. And I was like, great. Now they explained to me that I would be, um, shadowing on the first day. I would be with the doctor all day with the podiatrist. I would be, um, you know, shadowing him and just kind of getting a feel for what he does because it would obviously make it better for me to understand you know what what I'm trying to market to people so um I just thought maybe day one was scrubs so I went ahead and went out over the weekend and actually Friday yeah Friday I went and I got two pairs of black scrubs I wasn't sure I was like I'll just get two just in case you know I do have to wear them a few times um and they weren't too terribly expensive so, um, but it was funny. I went to a place called Scrubs and Beyond and they had, I tried on so many pairs. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing, how baggy, how tight, tucked in, tucked out, I, you know, no clue. But the girl that helped me was really, really nice. So went ahead and got a couple pairs. And uh, so when I, so I got there Monday, everything went well. I uh, got my daughter off to school because this is a whole new routine for us. You know, I normally drop her off in my pajamas. So here I am, you know, having to get her up, get myself up, get myself ready, showered, makeup, hair, the whole nine yards. And I normally live in like, you know, athletic, you know, leggings and, you know, the mom, typical mom wear. That's totally me. Baseball caps. And I thought, oh my gosh. So everything went off without a hitch on Monday morning got her lunch, got myself, you know, ready. And I got to work about 8.15. And um, the doctor, they opened their, they opened their office at seven. And I had told them when I interviewed, I said, you know, they asked if I had any questions. And I did say, you know, could, you know, with my start time, my start time probably wouldn't be till, sorry if y'all can hear a dog, my Frenchie, my French bulldog is right below where I'm filming. So you might hear, and he's chewing on a bone. So he's kind of gross sometimes. Yeah, that's Ollie. Ollie. Hey, Ollie. What are you doing, buddy? Now he's at the door sniffing. Um, okay, so yeah. So she said, that's fine. And I said, yeah, let's just say my start time will be 8.30. And I knew I probably would be able to be there about 8.15, but I wanted to give myself time in case there was traffic because it's about a 20-minute commute, which is not bad. But it's on, like, some highways and freeways, and, you know, there's traffic in the morning. So um, I get there about 8.15, and they're like, oh, you're early. I was like, yes. And they're like, oh, you just missed uh, the marketing, uh, um, our other marketing person. I was like, oh, because I saw um, they do have two cars. They have two company cars that are totally wrapped in the doctor's name, a big foot on the side, and phone number, and like all the information. There's So there's the SUV and there's a sedan. And actually, when I did pull up into the parking lot and parked, I did see an SUV um, driving off. And so I just had missed her, but that's okay. Um, I got to spend the next day with her. So they're like, um, let's let the doctor know you're here. And so they all wear these earpieces so they can communicate with each other. It's great. And the doctor used it all throughout the day. Um, so I already told my Patreons, I filmed a Patreon video on Monday night when I got home from work after I'd made dinner and kind of got, you know, settled in and kind of just updated them on the first day. And uh, so they got to kind of get a feel for I'm not going to get into detail because I don't want to, I think I grow some of them out, but you guys, <laughs> the things I saw, oh my gosh, Whew. okay, so I, I'm, I, I get squeamish, I can't look when I give blood, I'm, I'm very, very squeamish, now this is a podiatrist that does foot, ankle, and wound care. He has several diabetic patients 
um, who have wounds, which is so sad. And I've learned so much about it this past week, but the tiny, tiniest little scratch on a diabetic patient can turn into a, a really bad wound. And we're talking about, you know, losing toes, you know, your foot, you know, amputation, the whole nine yards. So it's just, it's so important. You know, foot care is so important. Um, we probably saw, and this doctor is nonstop and everyone was kind of laughing because I was like just following him all day and I would lose track of him a couple times because he'd go to the bathroom and then I'd use the bathroom and he was gone again. He never took a break. Um, now he got to sit down during the visits, right? I stood behind him the entire day while he um, saw patients and he would sit on his little stool and roll around. So, uh, but we probably saw, I don't know, I don't know how many, but I'm gonna say probably about 35 to 40 patients that day. I saw so many things I have never seen in my life and things that I will never be able to unsee. <laughs> and that was just one day. Now I can tell you, <laughs> with that, I'm not gonna give you all the graphic stuff I saw, but what was entertaining, but I feel bad for saying it, but it's true is, you know, seeing people's reactions, but not looking at them all the way, but like he would be squeezing their foot to see where the pain was. And they'd be like, oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, right there, right there. <laughs> and then a lot of people were getting uh, cortisone shots in their foot and in their ankle for pain. And, oh my gosh, you guys. And these poor people, it must've been so painful because they were all like howling and ooing and aahing. And it was just, it was um, the most interesting day I think I've ever had. Um, I got to sit in, I got to stand, sit, not, I got to stand in on a surgery. It is a surgery center. Um, and he, um, I had to put scrubs on. I had to put the hair, I had to put a hairnet on and a mask and the whole nine yards. And he just told me not to touch anything. So I just stood behind him and I watched and it was interesting. He actually removed, um, a little piece of a bone from a woman's toe so it would go straight from what I gather. Um, but you guys, oh my gosh. Wow. It was a day. So I came home. Uh, Lou had walked home from school. So that was good. Came home. And when I got home, I'm not getting home till about 530. Okay. Sorry. I had to pause. Um, Lou needed me. So um, yes. So I don't get, I got home about 530. And as soon as I walked in the door, it's, you know, go to the bathroom, feed the dogs, you know, um, make dinner, do all the things. Um, and it just feels so chaotic. It's like I'm trying to squeeze in, you know, everything that I do like during the day and I have all day to do into like, you know, the first like 15 minutes when I get home, 10, 15 minutes. It's like the hardest part of the day it feels like is when I first walk in the door. So, um, and then I came up and after I made dinner, I filmed a video for, um, for my Patreon. So it was just, oh, wow, I was exhausted. It was just pure, you know, but it was interesting. I, uh, during the day, during lunch, I, I talked to one of the medical assistants and I asked him how long he'd been there. And he said a year and a half. And he said, you know, it's not for everybody. Um, but he said, you know, how he sees it is, you know, he said, I've seen a lot of people come and go. Um, it's not easy. He goes, but it's very rewarding and you're helping people. And, you know, when you look at it that way, he's right. These people, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of times they can save feet from getting amputated and toes from getting, you know, he's just helping you. He's giving you, you know, your life basically. I mean, I know it's a little dramatic, but I mean, but yeah, um, and I was telling him like, yeah, um, you know, I saw a lot of things today that, you know, I've never seen before. And he goes, yeah, it's not so much what you see, it's what you smell. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> no. And here we are eating lunch. Uh, the cool thing is they did bring in um, a, a, a rep. I guess they have lunch brought in almost every single day. So I got Olive Garden for free that day. So they had like a catered lunch and there was like a rep there for like a drug company. So that's it. That was a cool perk. Um, I'm never in the office during the day, but I was that day. So that was cool. And so, yeah. And then Tuesday, 
Um, so, oh, here's where I found out I was gonna be wearing scrubs. It's getting ready to head out and um, they told me, I said, so what's the plan for tomorrow? Where do y'all want me and where I need to go? And they said, go ahead and come here in the morning and meet up with our other marketing person. So there are four other marketing people that do what I do. Um, just one other, actually two others are full-time. The other ones are part-time. So um, one of the girls works Mondays and Tuesdays and I was gonna be shadowing her on Tuesday. So, and I said, okay, and what do I wear? What's the attire, what's the dress code? And she said, oh, scrubs. She goes, you'll wear, I said, so I wear scrubs every day. And she was like, yes. I was like, and so I outwardly says, yes. I was like, so excited. I was like, yes. Cause you know, y'all, I don't have clothes, like work clothes, like nice business clothes. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have to go out and buy more clothes and all the money and the shopping and all the things. So I was so happy. Um, my scrubs are just plain black, but after you've been there for 90 days, you get to get your scrubs embroidered with the doctor's name and with the logo and everything. So that's going to be cool. So you have to wait 90 days to get those. Um, but I did get a jacket with the logo on it and everything. Cause we have tons of marketing, you know, gear and get up. So I, uh, Tuesday got to work, um, and I met with the other marketing girl and she was very, very nice. We totally hit it off. Um, I was just going to be shadowing her for the day. So we hopped in the car and we mapped out where we were going to be going for the day. Um, the goal is to visit 20 um, offices a day, either doctor's offices, urgent cares, retirement homes, senior living facilities, anything like that. Anywhere where we could get referrals, where we could drum up business and get referrals for the doctor, right? For folks to go see him. So we all have areas. There's a spreadsheet that we um, all share and that we keep track of. So um, I went out with her and oops, I just put that color away and I just see more that I missed. Um, and she was really, really nice. First of all, we started off by getting gas in the car. I was like, yes, because it's a shared car and it needed gas. And there's like a corporate card and everything. So I was explained, you know, how that all that works. Um, I will be using my car half the time and the company car the other half because between the five of us, we have to split up those two cars, um, So, which is fine. But you do get reimbursed for mileage. So we went out. The first thing we did was get gas. And then after that, we went to... Um, so there's eight locations for this doctor. I don't know if I told you all that. So um, the office that I go to in the morning where the main doctor is, is like the main office where it's 20 minutes from my house, but they have eight locations all throughout the Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, or the Dallas uh, Metroplex kind of area. So that's why they've got five of us going out into the different areas because there's eight different locations. So we first went to um, one of the offices, uh, which is about 25 minutes away, and we got marketing supplies because that's where they keep all the marketing materials. There's, um, we grabbed a big box of cups. There's like big cups, like plastic cups that have our name on it and our phone number. And then like trifolds, which are like the brochures, uh, pens, business cards, um, well, st uh, post-it notes with the company logo on it and the phone number. So like, you know, just marketing goodies to give away when we walk into doctor's offices. So we kind of like got ourselves all loaded up with that stuff and we put together um, cups like about 30 cups for the day. And that day we actually had a luncheon to go to at a doctor's office. So I found out we'll be doing like health fairs, um, lunch and learns, even like at senior living homes, we'll be doing like um, calling bingo. Um, they do have a mobile clinic, which is really cool. Where it's got like everything in a mobile clinic where you can like go around with a doctor and um, they can actually do uh, foot checks there on site at like retirement homes and doctor's offices. So um, so we got our marketing stuff and went up to a few, started visiting doc you know, doctor's offices and pedi you know, pedi pediatricians, uh, which is interesting because the day that I shouted the doctor, we did see a, uh, several kids come in for like ingrown toenails and things like that. So um, we're hitting up pediatricians offices and yeah, so it was interesting. I just kind of walked around with her and she would, you know, we'd walk into a doctor's office and she would introduce me, introduce herself and then introduce me. And we would ask for the referral coordinator and, you know, get a contact and, you know, get back in the car and take notes who we talked to and how the visit went and what we did. 
And then, um, then it was time to do the lunch. So we stopped by and picked up some food and uh, brought it to a doctor's office and set it up in their break room. And we were there for a couple of hours. So yeah, so my hours are like 8 to 15 to about five with an hour lunch. You have to take an hour lunch in there. So yeah, um, so that was Mon that was Tuesday. Her and I just, you know, was with her all day and we just chatted up all day and got to know her better and we have a lot in common. So yeah, it was really nice. And then um, at the end of the day, we go back to the office and uh, we don't have uh, an office or a room or anything for us. So we just go to the break room and I have to have my computer. And um, so what we do is we sat together on Tuesday afternoon and just kind of went through we have a marketing spreadsheet that we use and we just kind of log, you know, who we talked to, what happened, what, you know, and all those things and the date and our, our initials and everything. So she kind of explained the, the spreadsheet to me and then um, she's like, okay, you're going to be off on your own. I was like, okay. And that was it. That's all the training I had. <laughs> so um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I was going to be focusing on one particular area in, the, in one particular city. And I had a list of uh, doctor's offices that we know of in that area. So I went in Wednesday morning, um, got the keys to the company car, got in the car and started driving and realized that I had no gas. I was like, oh crap. And I forgot to grab the card, the corporate card. So I just used my own credit card, just, you know. I was like, I'll just figure it out. And so, um, you know, I just made sure I got a receipt and I, I gave it to them afterwards at the end of the day. But um, I kind of didn't know what I was doing the first day, right? I mean, I'd seen her. I was like, okay, I kind of have a feel, but I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't have my way of saying things yet. And I was afraid I was going to get asked questions that I didn't know how to answer. But, you know, all you can say is you don't know and get their contact information and tell them you'll get back to them. But it's really... It's really not bad. I mean, you kind of, you know, you kind of get a feel for, you know, when you walk into a doctor's office, if they're really busy, you don't want to take the front desk's time, right? Because, you know, they're seeing patients and they're busy. So sometimes it's a seven second, you know, hand them something real quick. Sometimes it's a little more, you know, I've got to meet some doctors that happen to be up front that heard me come in. Um, I've met some physical therapists. So uh, it's been interesting. Um, it's a lot of driving. I am in the car all day long. Now, one thing that she had told me when I was out with her on Tuesday is what she does to kind of pass the time in between the visits is she'll um, listen to podcasts. And I was like, that's a great idea. So, uh, but the first day when I was out on my own on Wednesday, I didn't have a cable in the car that would work on my phone. So I kind of just listened to the crappy radio and, you know, did what, but I was really more focused on, you know, what I was doing and not really so much like, you know, listening to audiobooks and podcasts. Um, but so I got kind of through that day and stumbled. I got, I did my 20 visits on, um, Wednesday. So I was proud of myself. I got through them. Um, if you would have looked at my, at the GPS, like if you looked at my, if you tracked like where I went that day, um, it would have looked like a bowl of spaghetti noodles. I mean, it was so bad. I, I, I would pass all these places and I was like, wait, I've already seen this before. I just would like backtrack. That's the hardest part so far that I've realized you're in the car all day, but you, you gotta like kind of map out and I don't know the area that well. I, I didn't know the city very well at all. And so, you know, I wish I, I had something where it would tell me, okay, start here and hit all these locations and you'll end up here. And you're kind of like, it all flows and makes sense. Cause I was like just zigzagging and passing places I'd already been to. And I was like, oh, cause the, the spreadsheet that we have is not in any type of like order of like locations. It's just like all of the place in the city. So I really, I did a lot of driving and uh, I have realized that I don't want to eat fast food every day. So I stopped at McDonald's and uh, ate in my car. So I'm eating in my car, in the car all day long, um, which is fine. You just, I just have to get used to it, right? Um, so then on Thursday, back in the car again, Thursday morning, 
And the mornings have been great with Lou. She's been really good about getting up in the morning and um, she's been walking home. But out of the five days, two of those days, she stayed at a friend's house playing after school until I picked her up from school or picked her up from the friend's house. So, but she's been doing pretty good. And I need another color. I'm looking for K. Here we go. So then um, on Thursday, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to kind of check this car out a little bit more. And I decided to open up the center console. And lo and behold, there was a cable that had like multiple ports on it for like different phones. And I was able to connect my phone to the car. So I was in business. So I've been listening to uh, True Crime podcasts and just like Dateline and 48 Hours. So it's been, you know, helping me pass the time in between, you know, stops. But what I do is when I'm at the office in the morning, I just, um, you know, kind of map out my day, get my 20 stops kind of mapped out, um, names, locations, contacts from maybe like who they had met with before. And then uh, just kind of go go about, I try to get 10 before lunch and then 10 after lunch. It's kind of my goal. So Thursday I went to Wendy's and I'm like, okay, I need to start packing a lunch because this is going to get real old and it gets expensive too, right? I mean, my first day out, I stopped at Starbucks and it's just real. So that's another thing is you want to use the bathroom all the time. So that's one thing. I am drinking a lot more water because I've got my water right next to me. I bring in like my little Stanley and I've got my tumbler next to me and my coffee. So I'm like nothing else to do in the car, but like drink. So, but I have to use the bathroom a lot. And sometimes doctor's offices, I don't really want to bother them and ask them to use their bathroom, but I'm getting better at that. Um, I've seen a lot of interesting things. Um, I wasn't in the nicest of areas Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, those three days. Um, saw some interesting things, was approached by people. Um, yeah. So I just kind of have to, I'm sure I'm going to have some good stories and things are going to happen because you're out driving all day, you're on the road. That's another thing, you know, here you are driving a company car that's, you know, got the name and phone number all over it. And so I was worrying about, you know, like cutting people off or not being a good driver or making someone mad. <laughs> and then like, you know, um, you just feel like you can't just, you know, everyone, everyone sees what you're doing and they can contact, you know, the doctor, I guess, if they don't, if you do something that makes them mad. So I'm kind of like on pins and needles all day, making sure I'm like driving really good and not too fast, not too slow. Um, and plus you're like on all day. You know, you're on because you're, you know, it's, it's not, it's a weird kind of work. It's not physically exhausting because I'm sitting all day, but it's like mental because I'm on all day as far as, you know, I don't know where I'm at. So I'm, you know, constantly on my phone, pulling up, you know, looking at the map, trying to figure out what location to go to next, following directions on my phone, um, on the GPS. And then, you know, going in and, be, you know, talking to doctor's offices and, um, so that's another thing. Um, I did not have any hand sanitizer in my purse. I actually recently ran out and I was like, so here I am touching. I love when they have the automatic opening doors, right? Cause I'm like, yes, I don't have to touch anything, but y'all I'm going into like primary care doctors where, you know, in urgent cares where people are sick and I'm having to open up doors and touch doors. So I did find in the center console, they had a pack of wipes that were like, um, that had like antibacterial stuff in it. So I was like, yeah, so I've been working on those, but I was like, I definitely need to get some hand sanitizer. Um, so I'm getting like paranoid about getting sick because I'm having to touch all these door handles and be around like, you know, sick people basically. So um, Friday was, was, was fun because Friday I got to go to, um, it was my first time to go to nursing homes and assisted living and retirement homes. Um, it, it's weird because they are, some of them are nicer than others. Uh, some of them you have to be buzzed in. Like, I don't want to say it's like a jail, but I guess it makes sense because you don't want, you know, folks just wandering off if they shouldn't be wandering off, right? So there's definitely um, some, some security there. So you have to like ring the doorbell to like be let in. You have to be buzzed to let out. Um, I was in this one retirement home where, um, they, uh, I walked in and this, the resident, this, this, she was so cute. This lady, she had a little walker and she was all dressed up in her Christmas outfit and her little, uh, antlers and her tutu. She was so cute. 
And she was like, can I help you? And I was like, yes, I'm actually looking for the coordinator that works here. And she's like, oh yeah, I know who that is. Let me go find her for you. And she was super sweet. And um, she went and found the woman I needed to talk to. And the woman wasn't very nice, but I mean, she wasn't rude. She just kept saying, we already have a, a podiatrist that we work with, but do y'all do fingernails? And I said, no, just toenails. She goes, oh, I know you do toenails, but do you do fingernails? I don't think so. Uh, I can ask. I said, I'm new, but I'm thinking, y'all, we basically do anything below the knee and down. So and she's like, well, if you do fingers, let me know, because then we'll use you. I was like, okay. So she was kind of like curt with me and short and like walked off. But everybody else has been very, very nice um, for the most part. Some some front desk receptionists had thought I was a patient or, you know, and they were like, yes, uh, your name? And I'm like, oh, I'm actually not here for an appointment because <laughs> I just have like plain black scrubs on. So it's kind of hard to see, you know, unless I'm wearing my jacket that has the logo on it. Um, they don't really know that I'm, you know, they're, I mean, I'm holding a cup of, of marketing stuff, but, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been good. I will tell you though, it's very eye opening. Um, I also went to some apartments that were like 62 plus 55 plus. Um, I was excited cause I went to one apartment complex and they were very nice. I happened to run into the manager and uh, she let me put brochures in their lobby and they've got a health fair in February that I'm gonna be going to. So I was excited to, to get that information. Um, and this place was really nice. And I'm like, wow, this is what it's like to like be in a, an adult community, like a you know senior living community where there's no kids and very, very nice. Um, one place, actually there was a couple, but there was one in particular that smelled. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah. I walked out of there going, whew, that was a little stinky. So I thought, I, I don't want to live there. But you guys, it was just, you never know what you're going to walk into. Um, I went into one um, MD's office, just a primary care physician. I went into his office, and it was just like in a shopping center. And when I pulled up, um, there was a guy that was kind of hanging out out front, and he looked either like homeless or maybe mentally, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure what was going on. He was talking to himself and like flailing his arms. And um, I was a little unsure about walking past him, but I was like, I got to go in there and I'm sure it was going to be fine. And it was, he said something to me right before I walked in the door, but I don't exactly understand. I don't understand what he said to me. But um, so I walked in and I was talking to the front desk receptionist or the front desk and um the phone rings and she goes, hold on just a second. And so she told me to hold on. So I, she puts, she goes, hold, uh, hold please. So she put that person on hold and then she continued to talk to me. And then next thing you know, the door opens and this woman walks in and she's like, yes, you need to call the police. There's a man out front and I've been sitting in my car for 30 minutes waiting to come in. I actually called, but you put me on hold. I was like, oh no, oh no. I was talking, I was talking to them and this poor woman was afraid to come in because this man, you know, was out front and she was like, I'm so shaken. I felt so bad for her, but she was very, very scared about this guy being up front. Um, but by the time I walked out, cause I used their restroom, by the time I walked out, he was kind of, he had already kind of wandered down. Um, I was stopped one day for, um, they, this pull, car pulled up, I was in an urgent care and I was getting out of the car and I was in the trunk no, no, no. I don't think I was in the trunk. No, the trunk was closed. I was walking. I was like behind the car about to walk across the street to the, to the front, to the door. And a car pulled up in front of me behind the car. And they were like, it was two girls. They rolled down the window and I don't know what was going on, but they seemed really out of it. And it seemed really weird and fishy. And they're like, our friend has a flat tire. Um, do you have a, and she named something that made it sound like it was something you need to fix a flat tire. Um, do you have one? And I'm like, you know what? I said, I just, this is a company car. I just started this job. I'm like, I don't know what it has. And I don't know. I'm sorry. I said, I can't help you. And they seem very annoyed and very put off and kind of like, you know, seem pissed off and closed it, you know, rolled up their windows and drove off. And I thought, oh my gosh. So <laughs> y'all, the things I have seen <laughs> this last week <laughs> have been, um, very, very interesting to say the least. 
Um, they did have, I found out on my first day when I was there on Monday that uh, the company Christmas party was on Friday night from seven to 10 at some bar, um, kind of close to where we are. And, you know, it was, um, and so everyone's like, are you coming to the Christmas party? I'm like, uh, and that's the thing about this job. On Monday, I met a ton of people. I introduced myself to a lot of people, to the medical assistants and the receptionists and, you know, front desk folks, all the people, right? But then talking to my other marketing person, I found out, and I can see where it happens. I'm by myself all day. I don't interact with these folks. I go in the front door in the morning. I might see a few of them when I say good morning, but I'm just getting the keys from the front office for the car. And then I'm going straight up to the break room and no one's in the break room. It's quiet. It's, it, so that's the one thing. I, I'm pretty social and I just have had to get used to kind of being by myself um, doing this job. So that's, it, it, but that's a good thing, right? Sometimes you don't feel like talking to people. But when I'm walking through the, you know, the doctor's office, they're all kind of having a good time and talking. And I'm just like, I don't really know anybody. And nor will I have an opportunity to form a relationship with anybody because I'm out all day. So I work there, but yet I don't. You know what I mean? That's what it kind of feels like. But they were, um, so on Friday, the day of the Christmas party. So that was my husband's birthday on Friday. So, and he'd been in Austin all week and I'd been working all week and I hadn't seen him. Plus it was his birthday. So, um, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were coming over um, Friday night at six and we went to dinner and at one of my husband's favorite restaurants. So, um, the kids and I, and we, the, you know, the seven of us went, but when we got home from dinner, it was about eight o'clock and I was exhausted. I was still in my scrubs. I told my husband, I'm like, do I have to change to go to dinner? It's like a burger place. So it wasn't like fancy or anything. And he's like, you're fine. Um, I just was exhausted from the week. I mean, I, again, it's a weird kind of tired and it's hard. I don't know if it makes any sense. Um, my husband kind of got it cause he drives, you know, to a different, he drives to Austin from Dallas, you know, every week and commutes quite a bit. And so I'm like, do you understand what I'm talking about? He goes, yeah, I, I get it. He goes, you're on and you're having to like, you know, when you're driving, you're like paying attention to what you're doing and you got to like, uh, but I'm proud of myself because I did go to my 20 visits every day and um, got lost a few times, but you always find your way. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, I go up to the um, break room and I scrounge around a little bit and see what was left over from them getting free lunch. <laughs> I'm always looking for like cookies or any dessert. Um, it's funny, every day when I go in the break room, at the end of the day, I get there about four or 4.30 to log in my, you know, my calls for the day. Um, but I get there and they've either had like Chick-fil-A or they've had like Mexican food. Um, on Friday, I found like a bag of chips from Chick-fil-A that, you know, had not been eaten yet. So I just kind of look for like scrounge for cookies or like, you know, anything that was left over from their lunch. But, uh, Friday I did stop at a salad place for lunch. It's called salad and go. I don't know if y'all have them where you are, but it's like a, I think they're a chain, but it's pretty good for like a really nice salad. It's like seven bucks, seven something for a salad. And it's a good size. So if you can get something under $10 these days, that's a pretty good deal. But um, yeah, what else? I just feel like it's been a whirlwind of a week. So like I said, I, at the end of the day, I go up, I log in my, you know, visits for the day, put my notes in, who I talked to, what happened. And um, I'm finding that um, the area that I was in it's not, again, like I said, it's not the nicest of areas, but we do have an office there. You know, like I said, there's eight locations. So like, I know why they had me there. But after three days, I'm like, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I want to go home, you know, I just want to like be in my area. And um, it definitely makes you appreciate a lot of things. For those of you that work, I don't know how y'all do it. I was like, how, did I, how do y'all do this? Um... I'm just so tired at the end of the day. I feel like I have no like gas left, you know? The tank has been kind of empty and that's why the whipping chat didn't get out this week. Um, I am going live uh, on Sunday. So I am going live tomorrow. So hopefully y'all can make it. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not familiar with my live schedule, I go live on Sundays at 4 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. So if you're new, old, what, join us. We don't really talk about diamond painting stuff most of the time. We may talk about a few things, but we just kind of catch up 
and uh, just kind of hang out. It's like a Sunday get together. So please join us. It's always a, like I said, it's always a good time. Um, last Sunday we had, um, we had Saban on, my friend Saban, and we did a Christmas party. So that was a ton of fun. I'm actually, um, I've got two diamond paintings to send out. I just, um, actually, before I started doing this uh, whip and chat, I um, got logged in to the pirate ship and the whole, you know, shipping stuff and was getting those kind of going. So, um, yeah, but today has been nice. Um, I'm glad I don't have to work on Saturdays because even my kids were like, do you work today? I'm like, no, I need the day off. Um, I got to sleep in, slept until about 8.30, which was great. And uh, I didn't want to drive anywhere, but I still had to, you know. Um, Lou spent the night at a friend's house. That was another thing. We went to dinner last night. On the way home from dinner, I dropped her off at her friend's house for a sleepover. And then I came home and then she needed her bag and everything because she didn't bring it to dinner, which I wish she would have. All her pillow and blanket and her sleepover stuff. So then I had to um, come home, drop off my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and um, we did gifts. And then I had to drive back out and drive her, drive her um, sleepover stuff to her. So I was just so tired. And that's, you know, I went, I fell asleep in my scrubs. I laid on the bed. My mother-in-law was still here. I felt so bad. I didn't even say goodbye to her. I sent her a message today. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't say goodbye to you. Um, but today was just kind of picking her up from the sleepover, go picking up lunch. But it's like the last thing I want to do is like drive. Um, but Monday, Monday and Tuesday of next week, I'm actually going to be in my city uh, in my car. So that'll be kind of nice. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, um, the thing that really sucked on Friday. So here in Dallas, it got up to um, 80 degrees on Friday. And up until that point, you know, I'd had the, I had that car, I had the company car Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I didn't have to, I never had to use the air conditioner because it was kind of on the cooler side, like 60s, maybe high 60s. And I kind of would just turn it down, but I never really noticed it not working. Well, Friday around lunchtime, I realized it was getting hot. And so I went to turn, I, I turned the AC button on, messed with all the different combination of buttons thinking, okay, maybe it's me, but it was blowing hot air. It would not cool down. So the rest of the afternoon, I had to drive around with my windows down, both windows down. And I got a headache because it just, it was like a hot, hot car. It was miserable, you guys. And so I don't know if, the, so the car needs, it's almost like a rental car. I kind of feel like it's kind of abused and it's not really loved on very much, but, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe driving my own car and being in my area on Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, those three days, I go out again to a location that's a little bit further from me, not really familiar with the area, but I think it's going to be a little bit nicer than maybe where I was before. So yeah. Um, that's kind of what I've been up to lately, what I can think of at this point. Um, my dog's barking. So, um, why is he barking? I don't know. Well, oh, everybody's so often is like, rope, rope. Um, let's talk about diamond painting stuff for a second. Um, I did get my, I ordered Dorothy from Hannah Lynn from Diamond Art Club. I got my Dorothy painting this week, so I need to do an unboxing for that. And then, um, oh, darn you, Diamond Art Club, you keep coming out with more Wizard of Oz paintings. Um, I did not buy one though, I can't. I just can't, you guys, I gotta focus on Christmas. Um, they came out with another one. They came out with, and I was just saying, are they gonna come out with the Cowardly Lion? And sure enough, they came out with the Lion today. So I did not buy that one. I'm kinda hoping that maybe it'll stay in stock and maybe I can buy it later. But I have, you know, the Good Witch, the Tin Woman. Is it the, no, Tin Girl, sorry. Um, the Scarecrow, I have Dorothy. Oh, I kinda need the Lion, you guys, but I just can't justify buying another painting right before Christmas. Um, I just had to make a payment for the retreat. So if you didn't know, I am hosting a retreat with Kara, Katie, and Alyssa um, next year. And I do have to make my own payments. So, you know, it's not free. Um, and so that payment was due. And so I had to pay that today. And I was just like, I can't, you know, I just can't. I haven't gotten paid yet. So <laughs> I just can't. 
but I don't know if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, but I'm like, gosh, they just keep coming out with, you know, more and more of these good paintings. So it's just hard. It's hard to resist, but I really got to focus on Christmas gifts. And I started doing a little bit of Christmas shopping, but I still have so much more to do. Um, and Christmas is coming, you guys. I mean, I, my husband's birthday is in December, which I always have to cut. And then my mother-in-law's birthday is in December. So it's always kind of a crazy time, um, you know, doing Christmas and birthdays. But hopefully it'll get done. Um, I was going to send out Christmas cards, but I haven't done that yet. I don't know if that's going to get done this year. I don't think so. This just is a different Christmas, you know, is what it kind of feels like. I have not done, oh my gosh, I have not done my Christmas premiere video yet. And they're due by the 15th, which is, oh my gosh, like next, like I have one week left. So I think the only thing I think I can swing is, um, and if you're not familiar with the Christmas premiere videos, um, creators here on YouTube um, and the diamond painting community, I think they're mainly diamond painters, I think. Um, there's like a marathon, like 24 hours, not 24, it's like 48 hours. 72 hours? I don't know. Um, this is my third year to do it, but um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the day after Christmas, like three full days, every hour on the hour, there will be a video for y'all to watch. So if you're alone during the holidays, we'll keep you company. Or if you just want to, want to get away from family and dye and paint for a little bit, um, they are pre-filmed, but uh, the way that it is, it, I will be in the chat. So normally the creator will be in the chat with you guys while you're watching the video, but it's pre-filmed and, uh, mine will be going up, which is awesome. Mine's going to be going up on Christmas Eve, which is Sunday um, at four o'clock, which is when I normally go live on Sundays. So it's like my, my time slot that everyone's kind of used to coming to see me. So, um, yeah, it works out, but I got to film it. So I think what I'm going to do, the only thing I think I can do is, um, maybe do a little like come along with me while I work. <laughs> I mean, you know, hang out in the car with me. Maybe I'll bring my mount, um, you know, visit some doctor's offices with me. You know, obviously I can't show too much, but maybe a little bit. So I don't know. I just gotta, I think that's the only thing I can do. Unless I can pull out something else after work, but, but yeah, so I've got to do that. Um, which is very important to me. Very, very important. So I'll, I'll figure something out. Um, so yeah, let me know how you guys are. Please, please, please. Um, I've been thinking about you guys. I miss you. I feel like, you know, my diamond painting used to come first. I mean, obviously my family would come first, but you know, as far as like everything else, this was important. This is very important to me. And I'm going to do my darndest to make both work, working and this. But I think I just needed that first week to try to like figure out, you know, because it's just tiring too. I'm just not used to working. It's been 11 years and being in the car all day, it's just going to be an adjustment. So I will, um, you know, I'm getting there. I've got the first week under my belt. So yes. Yeah, so thank you all so much for hanging out with me and for listening. Um, thank you for being here for me always and going through life with me. So like I said, be sure and tell me in the comments how you guys are doing and what you did during this time and what y'all are working on, what diamond paintings or something else other than diamond painting. Um, now that I'm in the car a lot for work, I definitely have, uh, will listen to more whipping chats and get kind of a good little routine. Uh, it definitely helped, help pass the time on Friday when I had, um, Thursday and Friday when I had the podcast going, it definitely, um, helped. I wasn't just sitting in the car. Plus I can listen to Christmas music and yeah. So, but I think that's gonna be it. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I've had to pause a couple times. So I'm not sure where we're at, but if it's a little short than an hour, I, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, I've got a, today's been a little busy. I've, like I said, I did laundry all day, dishes. I feel like I'm trying to catch up on like what didn't get done during the week. So, but yeah, it was a good day. And then tomorrow I will go live. It'll be just me and uh, yeah, we'll get to catch up. So uh, I'm going to try to get this out before then. And hopefully y'all can watch this before I see you on Sunday. So yes, if y'all enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. They really do help. Just click that thumbs up button down below. And then if you have not subscribed, I would absolutely love to have you 
the more the merrier. Um, it's, it's free to subscribe. It doesn't cost a dime to subscribe. You just click the button down below and then there's a notification bell next to that. And if you click on that, then you'll be notified whenever I post up any new videos. Um, I'm going to leave you all here. Um, I hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good week. And um, I love you guys. Uh, take care and I'll see you soon. Okay. All right. Bye guys.